Henry, I'm here. Hot liquor soup with beans and side pork. That's just what the doctor ordered, old buddy. Smells good. How about a bowl? <laughs> Lower me down, fellas. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> now eat. What do you want, Morgan? We don't eat. I need your brain for a humane expedition up in North Canada. Humane? Like that phony uranium find up in Alaska? Fooled people up there just as you could build hotels. You know, Morgan, you keep forgetting that I am a palethnologist. Buy another brain, will you? This one's not for sale. Oh, I can't trust other brains, Henry. Now, you listen to me, you overnourished, overweight Daddy Warbucks that calls himself a friend. Build your beer factories in Germany, your chemical plants in New York, sell your salmon to the Scots, spaghetti to the Italians, and air conditioners <laughs> to the Eskimos. But I do not want to take part in any of your humane deals. So you can just move on out of here. Ah, come on, Henry. Besides, my grandchildren have been asking about you. Mm, I do miss them. They must have a lot of fun chasing the caribou up there. No, don't look at me like that. I'm not going any further north than here. I'm on a permanent vacation. Something wrong, Professor? A lifetime friendship's what's wrong. What? Forget it. Make sure the security's good and tight, Cliff. This thing is priceless. Don't worry, Professor. You men on the left there, aim higher. That's it, like this. All right, change the spot of flamethrowers. We've got to get this thing melted down before dawn. Closer, huh? Come on. What's your grandfather going to do with it, Jane? Professor Waterman! Professor? Professor, the boss is on the tube. He wants you. Please come, will you? It's incredible. This giant's footprints are five times bigger than those of the Himalayan specimen. That's so? Yes. It's a Yeti, Morgan. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeti? Never heard of one. What the hell is it? I'll explain, Morgan. We call him the Sasquatch here in Canada. In the States, he's known as the Bigfoot. And in the Himalayas, where his footprints were first discovered, he's called the Yeti, the abominable snowman. Why abominable, I don't know. 
How the hell did it get out there? An avalanche probably caught him while he was sleeping on the ice millions of years ago. Then perhaps an earthquake caused the ice to break up and fall into the Arctic Ocean. After that, he most likely drifted as an iceberg until he reached the coast of Newfoundland. Yes, that's it. That's only my theory. It hasn't been proved. Your theories are always right. Henry Waterman is a walking encyclopedia. You can save that bull for somebody else, Morgan. I'd never let you publish my work. Now listen to this. This is important. It looks like nature preserved the Yeti in a perfect state. Hey, that's great. We could try and see if we could activate something. Like what? Like the nerves of his hands, or maybe even his heart. We might be able to catch his last heartbeat. It's worth giving it a try. Then try, for gosh sakes. What are you waiting for? I'll need special equipment. Tell me what you need, and then you'll get it like that. While you're at it, send me a few of my colleagues. Paleontologists, doctors, and anyone who wants to study the case. And the press, too. Count on it, Henry. Paleontologists, the press, the whole schmear. Anything you want. <laughs> Morgan, you're making a great contribution to science. Hey, don't forget that monster was discovered by my grandson, Herbert Honeycutt. <laughs> don't get excited, Morgan. Take a tranquilizer and go to bed. You're out of your element. We scientists will take care of it. <laughs> no paleontologist, no scientist. That monster is going to be the new Honeycutt Enterprises trademark. Fantastic idea, H.H. The image of nature, uh, the epitome of strength, the power that challenges the centuries, uh, a brute force ready to explode. Right. If that monster can be brought back to life, the whole world will be talking about it for years. By golly, it's a priceless publicity stunt for Honeycutt Enterprises. We must keep it top secret for now. Then we'll take our competitors and the world prize. The Maple Leaf Factors. I don't want any leaks to the press. Not a word about the Yeti's discovery until we're ready with our publicity campaign. Then, Zowie! Hello? I want to speak to the boss. <laughs> Under certain conditions of hibernation, life can be preserved indefinitely. Now look. Look up there, Herbie. You see those wires? They're attached to electrodes, which will register any signs of life in the Yeti. Heartbeat, blood pressure, nerve impulses, brain activity, and so forth. Now, let's see how they're mounting the plexiglass on the container in which they're going to carry it. Okay, lower it down. Now, easy, easy now. Your little brother seems to want to know everything. He's been betting it'll survive. You better look out or you'll get run over. Oh. He's fascinated just watching. Oh, I suppose we've been spoiling the boy, especially my grandfather, who's like a father and mother to him. If science can revive that thing there, then maybe your brother can recover too. They've tried everything, Cliff. Herbie lost his voice when he was in that plane accident in which my father and mother died. Then, as soon as everything is ready, we'll put him in there, and when the helicopter comes, we'll take it away. Well, do you approve, young man? Herbie, we've got to get back for dinner. Bye now. Bye, Jane. So long. There he is, tall and hefty. That big fella. He's in a fix now, though. <laughs> We're sure going to play a dirty trick on him. Poor Yeti. 
There he was, sleeping peacefully for a million years, then we come along and drag him into this dirty world. I wonder if we have the right to do it, Cliff, even in the name of science. Philosophy has no place in science, Professor. I think it should. We've been ignoring it for too long. But this time it's got to be done right. We just can't perform another experiment. He's got to live free, as he likes. Right. might be harmed. The Yeti is part of nature. Only she should give him life if she so chooses. We're at 5,000 feet, Professor. Shall we keep climbing? Go to 10,000, Will, the level he lived at in the Himalayas. The atmosphere up there is particularly full of ozone, ultraviolet rays. And I'll enrich his oxygen. That's the air we're going to make him breathe. Sure, you technicians at the base record everything that happens when we reach our altitude. Herbie, in a few seconds we'll be out of sight, but you keep listening, huh? We're now starting the last phase of Operation Yeti. And let's pray God gives us a hand. Begin watering, but gradually at first, Jane. That dial on the right is for the oxygen, and you mix that with the warm water. Right. We'll thaw him out gradually. Slow down the rate of climb. Open to pull all the water valves. Good, Jane.
Professor, the oscilloscope shows heartbeat. It's falling. It's almost stopped. All right, Cliff. Try stimulating his brain with electric shock. Tell me when the scope line flattens out. Then we'll try it. Now. Now it's flat, sir. All right, now we'll try. Any reactions? No, almost nothing. Tribulation of the heart. Try once more. There's some activity. Very irregular, sir. I'm getting a pulse reading. Ah, yes, my George. It's getting stronger. No, wait, I'm losing it. Stimulate the heart with a low shot, Cliff. That's it. It's responding. Do you read us? Over. Base one here. We lost contact for a while. What happened? I'll let Professor Waterman answer that. This is Waterman. Everything's okay now. We're starting our descent.
those rifles, Cliff. He's a human being. Like I told you before, to me he's only a monster. Oh, God. Did you hear what he said? Don't worry, I'll take care of everything. Technicians and workers of Honeycutt Enterprises, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come to meet an ancestor of ours, and I hope that you will like him and he us. In a few moments, the Yeti will be regaining his senses. I ask you all to be calm and do nothing to excite him. No, no, stop, please. No photographs. Okay, get out of here. No floodlights, no flashes. Turn off those lights. Get a shot of this. I'm using a white angle. No, no. This one. I should think so. Yeah, Stop. Right. No more photos. Right, Go on. Go on, move. <laughs>
wrong? Herbie, don't move. Stay close to me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No! No! Keep the crowd back. I'll follow. Wait, Professor. You can't go alone. Bring a first aid kit. And the rifles, too. Are his footprints. He crossed the lake there. Yeah. It's too far to walk around. I'll call the camp to send a boat. Let's escape before he comes back. Hey, what's got into you? Are you crazy, Herb? Don't you know cannibals are always good to their victims before they eat them? No? Well, you're coming anyway. <laughs>
always hurt. <laughs> That's right, bite it. What is it? Is that? Ah, he wants us to follow him. That yet is clever, all right. He went into the lake to throw us off the track, then came back here. Come on, then. sick, and they're having lunch with that yeti. It's a mighty strange animal, that's for sure. I don't find it strange at all, Cliff. Maybe it's all very simple. Look how he's treating Jane and Herbie. He's showing that same rough tenderness all animals have towards their offspring. The same concern men have for their children and families. I think he must have had a mate and a child. A family? Yes. All highly developed mammals have one, Cliff. We have too, even though we frequently forget the fact these days. The jackets the children are wearing are furry like the Yeti. I'd venture to say they've touched some memory cord of the creatures who lived with them in the Himalayas ages ago. the same.
you come here. Good boy, you brought them. <laughs> Professor Henry, did you see? The Yeti is all right. We made friends with him. He's sweet and gentle. We're not in any danger now. <laughs> I know, I can see that, Jane. He's adopted you as his family. He's mistaken Herbie for his son, and maybe you for his wife. She might have some duties to fulfill if she stays overnight. His hand is hurt. Hmm? Yes. And Androcles went to help the lion. Why don't you try and get him to come back with us? The scientists will arrive here tomorrow, Jane. I'll try. There. It doesn't hurt anymore, does it? <laughs> Start to leave. See if he follows you. All right, but you better go ahead first. Yeti, this is Herbie. I, Jane, and dog Indio. Now we go and you follow, huh? Boy, girl, dog go. Yeti come. Yeti, follow. Come with us, please. It'll be all right, come on. for sheer power. Put a Yeti in your tank and you'll have giant power. to meet him. There's never been a publicity stunt like this before. <laughs>
conference is canceled. We're taking the Yeti to Toronto. Okay, we're ready. Yeah, we'll have some work to do, though. Well, hit it. So long. What you're doing is awful, Morgan. Forcing the Yeti to live an unnatural life, just so as you can make millions off his back. Ah, cut the hogwash. Hogwash? You never get a belly full, do you? It's a colossal deal, you old great brain box. The whole world hasn't spoken about anything else ever since I announced the Yeti's existence. Every time they hear Yeti, they think of Honeycutt Enterprises. And that means me, my grandchildren Herbie and Jane, and me again. The Yeti's become our trademark. Do you honestly expect me to dump all this down the drain? That slave of yours should cut your throat. Well, Tony, what are you waiting for? You want the clothes to shave? Hey, Professor, how did it go? As far as I'm concerned, the Yeti is not leaving this place. Oh, please, Cliff, help us. Can't you do something? Jane, I'm just a honeycut dependent. He's afraid to lose his job. What can I do? Go and lick your boss's boots. Come on, Herbie, let's go. Jane. All right. Yeah, that goes along, too. Canada and the whole world is waiting to witness the arrival of the Yeti, the prehistoric giant of the frozen north. The helicopter belongs to Honeycutt Enterprises, Yeti's discoverers, and is bringing him to Toronto, where he'll be exhibited to the public. Right now, it's over Niagara Falls. <laughs> Hotel, where scientists and newsmen from all over the world are gathered to see this extraordinary creature, estimated to be over a million years old. Toronto is honored to be the first to greet this ancient ancestor and promises a warm welcome. <laughs> right. We shall proceed with the voting for the new vice president of Maple Leaf Factors Limited. Gentlemen, I need not stress further the necessity of selecting a man who is able to deal adequately with the powerful competition we are faced with from our rival, Honeycutt Enterprises. Thank you, gentlemen. Kowalski, he was elected unanimously. Thank you, sir. This is for us, men. And now, meet your new boss officially.
Uh, Miss Honeycutt, may I have a statement? Wait for me. We're on Worldwide right now. A billion and a half viewers. The TV cameras are picking up the new Honeycutt trademark. <laughs> My brother Herbie discovered it and Professor Henry Waterman and the rest. Can I talk to you a minute? Seneca, I can't forget you wouldn't help me. What did you do? Is it true that you and your brother teamed that giant animal? He's Excuse not an me. animal! Jane, please oh, let me know. Come on, give us a break. A couple of more questions. Can we get a shot of you? Come yeah, on. Discovered the Over here. You refused. You're only concerned about your job. Jane, I'm concerned about you, about us. What's wrong? What is it? What happened? The Yeti's gone to sick. I've got to stop him. Let me go. No, please. I must stop. Jane. 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 Jane.
Sergeant, headquarters calling you. This is Sergeant McIntosh. We're being flooded with calls and the chief is ready to bust. Have you found the Yeti? No, but he's reported to be in the area. We're going after him now. All right, spread out. Let's go. Move it. She's managed to hide the Yeti. Oh, that's wonderful. Where are they? Where are you? At the stadium. The whole town is crawling with cops. I know. The chief called. They'll be sure to find us sooner or later. You're at the stadium, you said? Ah, then you can take him to the United Motors warehouse. That's just uh, nearby. We represent them, too, you know. Now listen to me. Don't move from there until it gets dark. Then you can go. But be careful, baby. You hear? Jane! Yes, Grandfather. I'm listening. Did you hear what I said? Huh? Oh, yes. Uh, the United Motors warehouse. Okay, take him there and, uh... Hey, one moment. How'll you get him there? Oh, don't worry about that. I just walk and he follows me. He's so sweet and gentle, like a lamb. But I think Professor Henry should come here as soon as he can. You rang, sir? Call the United Motors warehouse and tell the night manager my granddaughter's coming over there with her friend. We'll keep in touch. Oh, there you are, Chandler. Right. I want you to take your men and organize a security service at the United Motors warehouse. My granddaughter and the Yeti are there, and I don't want the police or anyone to get near them. Which warehouse? At the foot of Humber Road. Is it air-conditioned? What a question. You look after your business affairs. Cliff and I'll take care of the Yeti. You old brain box. <laughs> Professor Henry, look. He suddenly seemed to grow weak. Then he lost his balance and fell down. Now he's sleeping. Yes, he's sleeping, but his breathing is not regular. Poor thing. He's so big and yet he seems so helpless. He is, Jane. Bring that oxygen over here, will you please? What's wrong with him? Can you do anything? I don't know, but I'll have a try. Well? The Yeti's been taken out of his natural surroundings, his environment. It's going to be difficult. We must be prepared for everything. Those two goons of yours really necessary? I'm afraid so, Jane. The boss ordered it. I have to go now and report to him. I'll see you later. Herbie, come and give me a hand here, will you? I'm so tired. Go and get some rest. I'll look after the 80. I'm one of the family now. Good night. Come on, Herbie.
Go and call the girl. He'll be dead soon. Yeah. Professor! Professor, wake up! Hmm? Yet he can't breathe! The, the Yeti? Yeti can't breathe. He's dying. He's dying? Oh. Check the air conditioner. Professor Henry, what's wrong? What happened? His breathing's almost up. We'll give him more oxygen. There is no more oxygen. Oh, no. No! Hello? Hello? It doesn't work! If the Yeti doesn't get oxygen within ten minutes, he'll die! No! Come on, hurry! Hurry back, Jane. Hurry back. Hello, police.
Call up, please. Start questioning us, I'll answer. We'll have to stop that beast before he slaughters anyone else. Sergeant, he couldn't have killed the professor. He was asleep. Officer. He's innocent. Officer, a monster just killed two men. I saw it with my own eyes. It was terrible. Where? In the Massey Ferguson warehouse. Innocent, huh? Oh, please, Sergeant, let me explain. Come on. Why don't you go? Oh, Professor. You get in the car. Hello. This is car 4774. Sergeant Stryker calling. What have you got, Sergeant? Put him on the loudspeaker. The chief's here. Go ahead, Stryker. The Yetis killed a Professor Henry Waterman and two unidentified men in the United Motors warehouse area. Shoot them on sight. Attention all cars. Shoot the Yeti monster on sight. Attention all cars. Is this Mr. Honeycutt? Yeah, that's me. This is Ralph. Professor Waterman is dead. The Yeti killed him. I'm sorry, Morgan. Yes, I know your men made him do it. No, really, Jane? Sure it was them. Now I know what happened. They fiddled with the air conditioning, tampered with the phone, opened the oxygen tanks, and as soon as I was out of the way, they murdered their professor. I'm going to the police. Jane, stop now. Get a hold of yourself. 
The police will never believe you, and they'll hold your grandfather responsible for everything. It'll break him. But I swear I'll get to the bottom of this. Cliff! Oh, Cliff! Please! You've got to tell the police Yeti's innocent. You've got to tell them. I will. I promise you. Mr. Chandler, there's a radio phone call for you, sir. It's the Honeycutt Public Relations Office. Stay with Miss Honeycutt until I get back. It's our men. They want to know what's happening. This is Chandler. Don't worry. The Yeti's no problem. The cops are closing in on him. They'll do the job for us. That's great. Anyway, if you should need us, give us a call. We're ready. Where are you? On the road to Port Credit. Good. I'll keep you in touch. I might need you. You never can tell. By the way, have you got enough ammunition? We got all you want. <coughs> you hear that? Oh, that's the kid's dog. Indio! Indio! Indio, where's Herbie? Where is he? Show me! There's just one problem. The girl caught on. That's not a problem. An oil drum, a bag of cement in Lake Ontario will solve that. I guess you're right. Got no options. The kid heard us. Get him, Barton.
Men to meet us on top of the mountain. Fox Baker One, go to the top of the mountain. Right behind you. Don't worry, we'll take care of that monkey.
Come on, man. Line up. No, wait. Don't shoot him. Yeti. Yeti. Get back, Miss Honeycutt. Get back. You're only making it worse. Yeti, stop. Stop, please. Don't come any closer. We don't want to hurt you. Yeti. Boy. Girl. Thank you. But please, go away. Go away. This world is not for you. Go back to the wilderness, to the mountains, where life is like you knew it. Goodbye, Yeti. Thank you.